Welcome to Numb Bills Fan Podcast. If you don't already, please subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, anywhere you find your podcast. Don't forget, NumbBillsFan.com has all of our content. Well, welcome to Numb Bills Fan Podcast number 122, apparently. Yeah, so it's your host, the one and only, the only one here now, because shit's changed, David Palermo. Find me on the interwebs, Numb Bills Fan, everywhere you can think. So, like, Instagram, get your ass on Instagram. Why? Because training camp starts this week. And if you don't know the date today, it's July 22nd. So just letting you know, get on Instagram, get on Twitter, get on Facebook. I'm going to share a bunch of one-minute clips throughout the day of my up-to-date thoughts. So if you want my most up-to-date thoughts, you need to follow me on Instagram. you got to follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Facebook. The best spot is Instagram because it's really fast for me, and you can get live up-to-date thoughts. Oh, shoot. Receiver's down or so-and-so in the depth chart. Somebody is trying out to spot a left tackle. Like, what's going on here type things you want to hear about? Yeah, hit me up there. So uh, make sure to follow Numb Bills Fan on Instagram. Also, if you're looking for any, like, Bills merch or something like that, you want some Bills cool stuff to wear, you want to support the podcast, hit up the Etsy store. Numb Bills fan on Etsy, and I have some knickknacks, some memorabilia, all sorts of stuff up for sale, um, along with Numb Bills fan shirts. So if you want to support the podcast for nineteen dollars ship, uh, printed, made from Casey or uh, Casey Diaz, help lay out. If you know Casey, give him a, tell him you say hi. He helped lay out a shirt, has a cool design on it. It has an X on the front, NBF, with a little standing buffalo for the city of Buffalo. And on the back, there's an awesome scene of the goalpost getting torn down. And just check it out. And it says, Numb Bills fan, and then uh, we'll rise to fight again, something like that. Uh, if you want to support the podcast, it's 19 bucks ship. And usually I ship priority mail because it's just easier. So I'll eat the $6.33, whatever you want to do. Um, I just want to keep everybody happy and I've been putting in like hand personalized notes and I should really stop because I can't write to save my life. Like it, it all looks like chicken scratch and, uh, I'll post some of those pictures on Instagram for you. Cause I did take a picture of the personalized letters, but I did just sell a Super Bowl hat on there. Pretty mint vintage new era. So check out that Etsy store. Also numbillsfan.com has all the content. If you want back episodes, please. Please, please, go back. There are other current episodes that are just really going to last you through the season. So say you enjoy what you're hearing, you want to go back. Go back to episode 119. Or I should actually say uh, 118 with Kevin Elliott from Barroom Heroes Podcast. He's part of the Punch Drunk Sports Network, which we are also brought to you by as well, which is a comedy podcast network. And they do a sports podcast called Punch Drunk Sports. Well, Kevin's podcast will be on that network and is. So we talked about the L.A. Rams moving to St. Louis and then moving back to L.A. So how he felt about that, he's an L.A. guy. So that's his hometown. And his favorite team was ripped from him. So as a Bills fan, if you're a Bills fan listening to this or not, uh, you know, the Bills almost moved. So you should check it out. That's podcast 118. Kevin's awesome. And also podcast number 119, the No Fun League is trying to be fun. Rule changes for 2017. And pretty much I rail that the NFL should have made these rule changes years back about celebration penalties and stop being acting like a bunch of dick Protestants here. No disrespect if you're Protestant, just saying. We're a little bit conservative for no reason sometimes. Let's loosen up a little bit. And, you know, the suits run the show with the NFL. Everything's about money. It's about the bottom line. Well, shit's changing. So I think it's more about being organic. That's why this podcast exists because I don't really care to blame players when it's not always their fault. And this stuff gets back to them. So hopefully we can interject some more objective news. If you don't know, lastly, we are part of Grandstand Sports Network. And you should really 
check out Grandstand Sports Network. Um, it's the best of the best podcast that you can find, uh, especially in the Rochester, Buffalo area. We should say Buffalo sports. So if you want a podcast about, say, the Sabres, you got Beyond the Blade podcast. All right. You could check that out. Subscribe to them on iTunes as well. You want my favorite podcast for football, Cover One. Eric Turner does a great job with that. Kevin is always on. If you go back to even our last episode, 121, um, you know, we talked about the Bills Fanatics deal, the Macklin debacle, like what happened with it, and also what happened at OTAs, you know. So um, that's old news now, but if you want to check it out, Kevin's usually on. So Kevin's awesome. Love Kevin. Good kid. And love working with Eric because when you work with Eric, Eric is behind a lot of this stuff. Um, things just get done. And I like being at work on a scaffold, being hounded, and him being a pain in my ass to get shit done for this network thing for him and for, I guess, everybody else too. You know, I got to do my part. Um, it might seem like people are bothering me, but it doesn't bother me. I need to kick in the ass. And uh, sometimes I get so honed in on one thing, I, I let other things slip. So really excited for Grand Sand Sports Network. Uh, essentially what it is, if you go to grandsandsportsnetwork.com, um, it, it's a it's a live I have like a time slot. I'll have a time slot. So none Bills fan will have a time slot. Um, the Rock Pile Report, another great Buffalo podcast. Uh, you got to follow the Rock Pile Report. Drew is awesome. So is Chris. Chris Chris is a big part of Grandstand Sports Network. Um, great with editing. I mean, if you like sound drops, you like a different taste of a radio show than what I offer here really check those guys out they're great drew usually gets fucking hammered at some point and him and i could bicker all day like uh, two italian ladies um so it's it's pretty sweet and uh those guys are nice so they're on that podcast network as well um but everybody has a time slot so daily you'll hear so you can pretty much just put on grandstand sports network.com there is an app coming out um and you could just listen to radio shows coming soon. It drops Monday. So if you're listening to this now, it's a Saturday. Um, so make sure you follow them everywhere you can think of as well. Don't forget CoverOne.net. Eric's the man. Best analytics. And if you want to know how shit works, I always go through Eric. And he's a trusted, vetted resource. No baloney. No bullshit. No hot takes. Um, also, recently, I was going to be a part of something called The Huddle. I am not going to be a part of them. I wish those guys luck over there. Gary at Roster Sports Network, Ryan Lasel and Icy Vic and everybody else is still contributing there. Um, you know, Spencer over there, so on the radio in Rochester. Shout out to him. So really thank you guys for the opportunity. Um, but I will have this year just sorry this episode's really like what's to come for training camp, what's to come for the bill season. Uh clearly if people are wondering, uh I don't do the podcast anymore with Adam Deacon. I love him to death. We're boys, but we have creative differences or whatever you want to call it. And um, it it is what it is. He's over with Bill's Mafia, moderating the boards, just killing it. If you need any graphics done or anything, you know, say you want to set up a podcast, say you want to do something, hit up Adam. He's awesome. You want your house painted? Hit up Adam. He's a wonderful painter. He painted my house. Love him. I'm sure we'll hear from him as always. He's a dog for life. We've done music forever. But things in my life personally have been flipped upside down in the last year. Um, people close to me know. And it's honestly not to get all like a little weird here. But it's been a struggle. So just going day by day trying to simplify my life. And that's I quit the band I was doing. I quit working for certain contractors. And it is what it is. So um, just trying to fill myself with. I don't want to say positive, but objective, um, I guess, situations. You know, something where I'm not going to beat myself up so much. So this year should be great. We're going to have a lot of content up. I'm going to be a lot more active on Instagram and all the social media platforms. There will be a lot of podcasts about the NFL in general. There's so many things that are just left out there that I can rail on forever, and I just don't. And usually it's because I have to get it set up. Me and Deacon got to get up. We got to do whatever. Um, you know, now I don't have to have as much of a setup. So I expect to be live pretty much 
all the time. So if you don't, remember, follow Numb Bills Fan on Facebook. There's the Facebook live show is going to be coming back. Everybody who watched before, please check it out. Come interact. Leave some comments. I can't wait. This year should be a very positive year for the Bills. I don't see how it can't be. And if you want some positivity, you want to laugh your ass off, you know, listen to Punch Drunk Sports Podcast. You know, it's three comedians, Ari Shafir, Jason Tebow, and Sam Tripoli. I just caught up with Sam Tripoli uh, in Syracuse. He pulled me in the back room. It was, in, you know, pretty flattered. And uh, the website should be up very soon. And it's going to be a whole podcast network. Uh, say you have another sports team you like. Well, you might like the Dodgers. Well, there's going to be a podcast just about the Dodgers from a comedian. Numb Bills fan podcast is the sole exclusive podcast. Very flattered as I point on this speaker cabinet, like an Italian guy that I am. And uh, very, very stoked to see what they have coming up. So, again, punchrunksports.com and at punchrunksports. Uh, so, Sam Tripoli, great comedian. So, I'm in Syracuse, had a fun time. He was telling me how stoked he was in the network. And we had a cool conversation about just how really – a lot of times this media does get back to the players and there's some awful stink about Buffalo. I can't figure it out. Frankly, I didn't plan on going down this path, but since I'm sitting here talking to myself like a weirdo, um, I guess I'll just talk to myself more about this. So, uh, as I digress, um, there seems to be like a funk in Buffalo and I have to own it like right now. I backed this whole Rex Ryan thing that happened. I know people who listen to this podcast. Uh, we got some new listeners coming in. So I'm going to have to review some stuff that you've already heard my spiels. You know I had a bone to pick with Doug Marone. And now Doug ain't that bad because he actually came out and said, you know, I screwed up in Buffalo. And then I bought Rex Ryan's bullshit. And I believed in Rex Ryan. You know, when he's talking about having a cutting edge defense. Hey, um, who's clogging the passing lanes? If you're throwing the ball, you know, it seems like he had some good concepts. But then in hindsight, when he gets axed and then, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire, things start to come out. You almost wonder if um, really how how loose was the shit? Because you got a guy like Lorenzo Alexander, 33 years old, making the Pro Bowl. Well, he clearly put in the work. But now in hindsight you got a coach in Sean McDermott who's watching their game tape or their practice film from the year prior. Imagine if you're a player who's slacked the year prior. And the coach goes, so what happened? How'd you practice? Oh, man, coach, I practiced really hard. Because you're not thinking this dude's going to go look at the tape. And now you just lie to this guy's face. So as far as I'm concerned, Rex Ryan, there was a stink as well with Rex Ryan. And I have to own it because I want to support him. You know, I did not think that Rob Ryan was going to be running the defense, which come to find out he was running the defense. And for me, it's really easy to be negative and be like, don't bring in this fat bastard. What are you doing? He's a piece of shit from New York. Fuck him. Fuck it. You know, I fucking knew it all along. Well, guess what? Fuck face. You're in a division with the Patriots. You know what's going to happen? You're probably going to lose. So you're probably not going to make the playoffs very easily if your shit is not together. So you have a guy in Sean McDermott coming in. I look at it like, okay, the, these loose ends are going to be tied up because you're hearing about practices with Rex where guys would leave. They wouldn't really practice hard, and they would be lost. And Rob Ryan would be like, you would have guys leaving the room, and Rob Ryan would be like teaching the whole class what's going on with the defense. So it seems like Rob Ryan took over the D. But I can't totally take a shit on Rob Ryan because those linebackers got a hell of a lot better. And they showed up. So you have to look at things objectively, but I'm just here to own. I'm eating shit on Rex Ryan. I messed up. That said, Sean McDermott comes in. I love his pedigree. He's a wrestling guy. If anybody has ever wrestled in their damn life, I keep talking about it like I was some wrestler. No, I sucked. I hung out on the team for four years, but I kept showing up. And in hindsight, it pretty much set me up for life to keep grinding. So I'm very grateful. I'm not religious, but you can say I'm blessed and I went through that. Uh, if you know Greg Moore, she interacts with me on Facebook Live all the time. If you listen to WGR 550, Greg from Roster calling in. We're going to have him on soon, by the way. So he's awesome. Greg the Caller, love Greg Moore. Great dude. He always calls in WGR. I'll call into a couple shows in Rochester as well. 
um, good takes. But I used to wrestle with him in high school, ironically. And uh, through this podcast, we, like, reconnected. So he, him and I, we came up through that wrestling thing, and it's like, in order to get to the level that Sean McDermott was at, you really have to work your ass off to be like, I think he was like regional champ or something crazy, something way high, like past states. And to be a state, to, to even go to states as a wrestler, you're a pretty awesome wrestler. I don't care what state you're in. You're a pretty damn awesome wrestler. So for Sean McDermott to really get to where he was at i mean i remember running around the neighborhood in garbage bags or a rubber suit because i couldn't afford a rubber suit so i would take somebody else's rubber suit that we weren't supposed to wear and when it ripped i would duct tape it back together and and, and hit the streets couldn't watch tv because i saw a hamburger on on the tv i started salivating like fuck all that point being there's a lot of sacrifice and discipline that comes with that sport and if there's one thing you can't do it slip on fundamentals. And everything you hear about Sean McDermott, it's pretty much there's no air left in that dough. And I can't wait to see, especially after hearing, it's like, you know, it's one thing to hit the podium and tell me what you're going to do. But when you have, like, these vets coming out, which they do all the time, I'm sick of hearing, and, and it's not that I don't like Kyle Williams, don't take it this way, but I'm sick of hearing, like, the same shit from these vets. Oh, you know, it does seem great because they had to support their coach. And it's nothing against them. It's human nature. We want to believe it. I want to believe it too. But it seems like things really are different this time between Rex Ryan and Kyle Williams. Or uh, I should say uh, Sean McDermott. Sorry. So when you got players coming out saying that it was like an easy-ass practice before, even at the end of the year, Sammy Watkins is like, yeah, we need a coach to instill some pretty much like get this ship in line here. Uh And that kid ain't that old of a player. And say what you want about Watkins. Let the kid be healthy before you judge him. And if you want to touch on that Watkins contract thing while I'm at it, oh, I think it's a genius move for the Bills not to sign that fifth-year option on Sammy Watkins. Genius move. Why? Because now you just have options. You could be flexible. The Bills are bringing in Anquan Bolden. Look at Anquan Bolden's production. The kid, is, the, the dude is a monster. The guy had his mouth wired shut from taking a hit to the face and was playing in football. Like, he's, it should have been a career-ending injury. And if you listen to anything, a lot of people are like, well, bring in Anquan Bolden, bring in Anquan Bolden. Like, what's going on? Are you going to bring in Anquan Bolden? And it's like, if you look at his numbers... On Pro Football Focus, he had the best wide receiver rating and the second best drop rate amongst all the Lions receivers last year, which is where he was at. So I think he was underutilized. He's he's been known as a slot guy and he's a possession receiver. That's how he is used. But you got to keep in mind that he also had the lowest yards per route run. And honestly, what are you asking this guy to do? You're asking him to catch the ball. You're, you're, you're looking. This is your guy in third down. This is your vet. This is the guy who's going to set the tone for Zay Jones. This is the guy who's going to get Sammy Watkins shit in line if there's anything left over. I don't like hearing a Tyrod saying, you know, Sammy is just like so focused, this and that. Like, that's cool. That's also a backhanded compliment. Nah, these players got to get their ass in gear, and I'm sure they are. And don't forget, these kids are young. They're in their 20s. So for people to have, like, some, you're 50 years old and a sports fan. You're 30 years old and a sports fan. I'm sorry, a kid with millions of dollars is going to fuck up. Get off their case. Why don't you encourage them a little bit? You want to tag them on Twitter and shit all over them? Like, they don't read that? That's a conversation I had with Sam Tripoli, and he's a Clippers fan. And Sam was talking about how, like, that definitely gets back to the players. Look at Blake Griffin. He's just falling off. Because of that, he reads all that shit. These players read all that. And then you're in, like, a city like Buffalo where, like, oh, now you're supposed to be the savior of the city? Why? Because somebody gave away two first-round picks for you? Come on, man. That ain't his fault. I'd almost rather just, like, do something detrimental and go to a team that actually wins who picks later in the draft if you know you're going to get picked. Like, of course you want to be the savior of the franchise. And, yes, there's a different financial benefit, but, like, If you're successful right off the bat and you have a good quarterback throwing you the ball, say like a top 10 quarterback, 
shit, you're going to have a sustained career. Because if you can show flashes of it, that's why I ain't worried about guys in the NFL like who who play ball like a Kirk Cousins. That dude, they they're, they're you know the the foreskin Redskins are, are dealing with his contract. They don't want to. They offer him some dog shit, and it's like that guy's already proven it. That guy's a paid man no matter what. So good riddance Redskins, I guess, for that guy. But you got to support these players, and if you don't support these guys, and at least be objective, they're not gonna want to show up. Because what if everywhere you go, like Buffalo doesn't have that much going on. So no disrespect. You live and die by your sports teams. I live in Rochester. I hate that we don't have like a legit top tier sports team. I've always wanted to live in a big city. Well, when you start traveling to see music in our way and you end up by yourself, well, you start going to the games. Might as well, right? So Buffalo has felt like a second home pretty much my entire life since I was 16. Uh, going out of the town with friends' bands. Uh, to go help him practice, whatever the hell it is. And I just ventured my way out there, stayed out there, made some friends. And, um, you know, I, I love the Bills to get away from music inspiration in some weird way. But it's like so many people in that stadium live and die by the team, but there's so much resentment for 17 years of no playoffs. And I hope a guy like Anquan Bolden comes in with his shit together. Of course, as always, he sounds underutilized if you look at the numbers. And people want to talk about age. How about you let these people fall off first? Because I will take a guy like Anquan Bolden who knows what's expected of him, knows his role, and can teach the other guys how to work. Look at Jerry Rice to Terrell Owens. That's what I want to see on this Bills team. I want to see at every position, group, some leaders, at least to show people how to work. You got Richie Incognito on the offensive line. He comes in. After all that shaming for the bullying scandal, all that stuff, which are private text messages. I don't even got to back them or not. But this guy comes in, gets signed after not playing football for a long time, for at least a year. I mean, this guy comes in and is running past everybody in OTAs and minicamp. And, and that's coming out of other people's mouth. So that guy sets the tone. This offensive line was very solid. The right tackle position was a little shaky with Jordan Mills. He had, you know, uh, if you talk to Eric Turner, I don't want to misquote him, but he says he didn't seem to have confidence. Maybe I'm wrong. Don't quote me, but, um, and I think with the new coaching staff coming in, it seems like these coaches all have their shit together. Very good coaching staff. We've talked about it in past podcasts. I'm sure you've already gone through it, but it seems like everything is going to be in order. And, again, no air in the dough. All I care about is a team that shows up, they know how to work, they're going to give their best effort. You don't have to eat, sleep, and obsess over football 24 hours a day. You're a human. How about you hit certain checkpoints? Because you're not going to improve unless you have something to build on. But if you beat yourself up too much or if you're a coach and you pile too much information on these players, which is exactly what Rex Ryan did. They said year one, look, that defense was awesome the year prior. We're going to make it better. And he even said during practices of training camp, yeah, we're just piling on as much information as we can to them and seeing what they can handle. Well, guess what? They didn't know what the hell to handle because they were confused, especially on defense. And when you're the head coach and that side of the ball drops off, that side of the ball drops off you don't look good. That said, Sean McDermott has not coached one down in the NFL as a head coach. But he did what any smart business owner or CEO or anybody does. And he surrounded himself with very good coaches. And, of course, every year we hear about these coaches. It seems like every other year, new coaching staff now. So you hear about these coaches, how great they are. Sanjay Lau is a wide receivers coach. Blah, blah, blah. Greg Roman, he's so innovative. I get it. Well, I'm a big fan of Leslie Frazier, and that dude is kind of cool collective from the Dungey Tree. He's been around the block, and he was a hot coaching candidate for a long time after Chili Childress got fired in Minnesota. He got hired. But before Childress got fired, this dude was going on interviews. So as any good coach says, like Ron Rivera, hey, it's nice for him, for Sean McDermott, to have a Leslie Frazier with him because then – this guy's already gone through it. You have a sounding board. And that's what this team seems to be littered with. Now, if you've not heard the news, 
Dave Gettleman, the general manager of the Panthers, who was an, a, a scouting intern and then a scout for the Buffalo Bills in the 80s with Bill Polian, the former Buffalo Bills general manager, uh, he was fired. Uh, Jerry Richardson, the owner of the Panthers, fired him. And word is, from what I'm hearing, is, uh, you know, vet players didn't like how they were treated. You know, look at D'Angelo Williams, Steve Smith. And they were released, which is what you do with older players. You release them. They're making a lot of money. At the same time, it doesn't necessarily mean I agree with it. I get it. I'm hammering the table for Anquan Bolin. He's a vet and older gentleman, but he has not fallen off. Therefore, Dave Gettleman, should the Bills bring him in? I'm going to dive more into this. I have my friend Tim Avery coming back on the podcast soon. So Tim Avery is pretty much going to catch me up on what's been going on with the Bills. Because I'll be honest, life has been kind of uh, overwhelming, and I'm just busy working and really just grinding. And it sounds like a lot to sit in front of this computer and talk a bunch of shit, but it really is right now. Um, but I am back into full Bill swing, full full NFL swing. I am stoked for the season now. Uh, I need to breathe a little bit. If you know me in the past, I, I, I'm usually all about the offseason. Like, I, I can't get enough Bill's information, NFL information. I'm so sucked in. But uh, I need to have some me time. And things are a little bit different going forward, but it's going to be a fun time. And, in fact, I should have about tr- triple the content for everybody. And, um, you know, so I really wanted to get into Dave Gettleman uh, in the next podcast because do you think the Bills maybe should bring in Dave Gettleman as like a czar? At the same time, word is he's a my way or the highway guy. That's also some reports. So do you want that guy within the organization? Is that why Brandon Bean may be bounced? You know, it's like. If I'm Brandon Bean, I just got this job and Dave Gettleman got fired, you know that job would have been Dave Gettleman's. So do you want to hire that guy and maybe get muscled out or do you give him a position? Does he love him that much? Like, I don't know what the real story is behind the scenes. I frankly don't give a shit, but it would be an interesting conversation of how could he help the Bills? At the same time, are there too many cooks in the kitchen? Because I don't know if I want to go down that road. So there's that. Also, um, I'm pretty soaked on the NFL draft, seeing how these, these, these draft kids work out in training camp. I am very stoked for the, the depth chart. So, really, it's, it's going to be an interesting training camp. I hope that fundamentals, I, I think you're going to have a team that's going to represent your city well. A lot of people, one thing I will give the Buffalo Bills fans credit is very organic, very, you got to prove it to me. You want to come in here with your big brash mouth? You want to talk some shit? You better prove it. You got your flashy ass truck. You want us to see where you are all the time? You want pictures of Rex Ryan? Well, you ain't winning. So until you're winning, you got to show it. And that's a real Buffalo fan. I can't wait for the day that the Bills are winning. And you got these dingleberries in other cities like I see here, like, oh, all of a sudden you're a Golden State Warriors fan? Wait, you're like eight and you have a Tom Brady jersey? Come on. You should not have an eight-year-old if you live in Buffalo or within the team radius that likes fucking Tom Brady. What the fuck is wrong with you? How'd you raise your kid? Well, it ain't really your fault. Because the Bills have sucked. Just ask any media member. Because that's all they tell you is that the Bills suck. They're never going to get it together. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to look at it every year is different. If you want to go read the headlines, like, say, I don't want to even mention names. I was just about to. I don't need to take shits on everybody as always. But it's not that bad. When game three rolls around, I don't want to hear if Tyrod Taylor has it. I don't even care if there's a a secession plan to Tyrod Taylor right now. All I care is that people support the team and you let them work. Be respectful to them, to the players, to the coaches if you see them outside. Encourage them. Being a douchebag on Twitter, these people have families. You know, you might be going through some shit in your life, but the players did nothing to you. Don't forget, 
we don't have super shitty people like you could say Ezekiel Elliott on the Bills. And that's why another topic of conversation next podcast with Tim Avery is what's up with Adolphus Washington? Do you think they'll make an example of him? Is he on a short leash? Um, there's news with him. Don't even want to mention it because I don't want to bring any negative light out. But there's news with him. You could Google it. And really, I think if the t- if if fans have the support and the encouragement to to support their team, that the team could do a lot of things. And we have a direct line to these players. I don't like going to work and having somebody hounding me and watching me. If I'm doing like a ceiling or something and I'm looking up, I don't want to look down at you looking at me. That's weird. So let these guys do their thing. When they're out with family, say what's up to them. Or if they're eating, leave them the hell alone. Let them focus. So, anyways, support your damn team. I'm done ranting here. I feel dumb. Not really, but I had nothing really to break down, break down yet. Uh, Tim Avery's going to catch us up. He had some really interesting thoughts on the draft. I've been wanting to get Tim Avery on. He says allegedly he's going to write for numbillsfan.com. I don't know, but if anybody knows Tim Avery, he is like the sweetest human ever. His family is awesome. I did work in his parents' house in the kitchen. And his mom is like the sweetest person ever. She makes beautiful artwork and she's a wonderful human being. And his dad's an engineer that like does crazy work on the house. He figures it all out. So good people. Tim Avery's the man. Can't wait to have him on. And uh, good kid. So if you don't know Tim Avery, find him on the interwebs, however. Just find him through Bug Jar Show or something like that. You know, he books most of the Bug Jar stuff if you know that venue in Rochester. So. Uh, look forward to hearing what he had to say about the draft. He came out to the uh, the draft show with Rochester Sports Network at Batavia Downs, and uh, I'm sure he has some interesting thoughts on, especially with Anquan Bolden coming in, like where does he see guys being slotted in around the depth chart? So don't forget, check out numbillsfan.com, punchrunksports.com, shoot them a follow at punchrunksports. They're legit comedians. I mean, Ari Shafir... Just had a special on Netflix, a double special. Get dropped on Netflix. Uh, I think it's called Double Negative. Check that out. Sam Tripoli has a comedy album out on iTunes. He also has a podcast called Hinfoil Hat. Shoot him a follow at Sam Tripoli everywhere you can think of. And also Jason Tebow, funny ass dude. Find him, the Teeb, um, on Twitter. And also, Jason Tebow is on Instagram. He is hard to spell. It's like a T-H-I-B-A-U-L-T, I I think. Um, I'm hoping to get him on the podcast. So if you're listening to this and you know him, just please hit him up. Uh, Very interesting thoughts because the conversation on the table with Jason would be, he's a Falcons fan. Well, that offense with Shanahan there, Shanahan Jr. there, um, guess what? Rick Dennison was in that same offense. So it's very similar principles, obviously, you know, from the Shanahan tree through Kubiak and then Rick Dennison. So I think there's a lot to talk about. And plus, who likes the Patriots anyways? And he's a Falcons fan. So it should be an interesting conversation if that ever was to happen. So hopefully we can make that happen. Um, Also, don't forget to support, you know, the Bills Mafia Facebook group. Good ass dudes over there. Love Chris Williams. Um, also, Adam, the Bills fan, if you know Adam, Deacon, love Deeks. So follow him. Shoot everybody out to follow. Get active on there. Cover1.net has big things going on. Grandstand Sports Network, the best view in sports. So make sure you get to it. Grandstandsportsnetwork.com. And also, if you want to support the podcast, please, numbillsfan.com has a link. Click on the shirts. It directly links you up to the iTunes store. If you want to see back episodes, boom, right there. There's a podcast. There's a player. So you don't want to subscribe, which you should subscribe to us on iTunes. Don't forget, follow Numb Bills Fan everywhere you can think of. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I'm on Snapchat, but not for Numb Bills Fan, I don't think. Maybe. I don't know yet. I was trying to do it for a bit, but, like, really, I don't I don't know. Don't forget. Numbillsfan.com will lead you everywhere. And thank you to everybody for all the support. Um, it's been a long summer. It's been a wild fucking year in my life. 
frankly. So take care, and I'm out. I'm David Palermo, if you're wondering. See ya.